Hello, I'm going to demonstrate the concept of torque. Torque is defined as the force multiplied by the lever arm length. In this case, the force is attached to this object at this point. The object is free to pivot about an axis through this point here, as if a pin were placed through the object at that point, or a bearing were uh, placed at that point. So the object will rotate about this axis, could be anywhere, but I've just chosen this place uh, arbitrarily. If the axis is here and the force is applied here, we need to identify the line of action of the force. We see the line of action of the force drawn in dotted here, and the lever arm length is defined to be the shortest distance between the line of action of the force and the axis of rotation. In this case, it's this line right here. That's the lever arm. The lever arm length is the length of that line. Notice that we have a 90 degree angle between the lever arm and the line of action of the force. Now I'm going to demonstrate uh, torque with several examples. Let's begin with a bolt and a wrench. Oftentimes we think of uh, torque associated with tightening a bolt. Here's a wrench and I'm going to pull on the handle of this wrench pretty much perpendicular to the handle. So in this case the lever arm will be approximately the length of the wrench if I'm out near the end of the handle. So I'll apply the wrench to the bolt and pull on that handle out near the end. I apply with a certain force. That's the force I apply. And there's a lever arm length. We'll apply the lever arm length times the force and that's what we mean by the torque. Now if I want to tighten it more, it's going to require more torque. I have to apply a greater force with the same lever arm length. If I come in here with a shorter lever arm length, I have to apply even more force to get the same torque. So we know from experience it's easier to apply a certain torque with a longer handled wrench. We can use less force, produce the same torque as we would have with a larger force through a smaller length. Another example of this would be uh, to go to a, a bar that's balanced, and here I have a magnetic chalkboard. I'm going to balance this bar at that particular point, and we notice that uh, the bar is balanced if we support it at the center. However, if we have a mass, or two, or three, hanging from that bar, for example, suppose I go out here one, two, three, four, five, six units of distance and I have uh, a force of one unit. This actually happens to be one newton of force. I go out here six units of distance with one unit of force. I have a certain amount of torque and if I release my hand and let that torque take over, we see that torque will cause the system to tend to rotate. So this points out what happens when there's an unbalanced torque. We see up here Torque causes a change in the rotational motion, and the net torque must be zero for rotational equilibrium to exist. Now, how can I get the net torque equal to zero? Well, I can hang some weights over on the other side. So, I'm juggling these weights here. I'll take, uh, let's try uh, two weights over on the other side. Where should I put them? Well, if I have one unit of force here and six units of length to get the same torque, I want to go out here, one, two, three, units of distance. One unit of force doesn't quite do it, so I need two units of force. Here we see that two units of force multiplied by three units of length is equal to the same torque as one unit of force multiplied by six units of length. Here the torque is balanced. The torque tending to rotate it clockwise is equal to the torque tending to rotate it counterclockwise, and uh, therefore uh, the net torque is zero, which it must be for rotational equilibrium, which we have in this particular situation. Now I'd like to show you another demonstration of torque. For this one I have a bar here from which I can hang some weights, and I'd like my good colleague Dr. Mary to assist me with this. So Dr. Mary, if you'll hold that, uh, that bar, and uh, I'm going to take three newtons of force here, three newtons of weight, and hang it on the bar. I'm going to start off 
with a relatively short lever arm, which we could call one unit of length. And you see that uh, Dr. Mary uh, is capable of supplying sufficient torque to keep that bar from rotating down. Now, if I apply more torque on a bar by taking these same weights and hanging them out of here on the end, five units of length now for the, for the uh, lever arm. Now let's see what that torque causes to happen. Now the torque is uh, too great for even the strength of Dr. Mary to hold that from falling down. Again, closer in, same force, shorter lever arm, less torque. Further out, same force, greater lever arm, greater torque. In fact, let me see what happens if I take just one unit of weight, one newton of weight, out here on, this, on the end of this thing, and uh, let's watch what happens right here. Just one newton of weight, and the torque is too great, it causes it to fall down. So you see the effect of the lever arm length as well as the force in terms of producing the torque. We try that one more time here, slightly differently. I'll start off here with uh, three newtons of weight, one unit of length, and uh, I believe Dr. Mary will be able to hold that there with some effort, and I'm going to gradually work further out and watch how the torque increases as the lever arm length increases. Greater lever arm length, greater torque. Torque is equal to force times lever arm length. 